Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, my God. Come on in tonight. Pastor Jonathan Perry here. Resurrected Hope Ministry Thursday night. Deep dive Bible study. You are most welcome. Just come on in. Bring a friend. Bring a family member. Bring somebody. Bring a stranger. Amen. Like and do all share <coughs> in Jesus' name. Uh, so tonight... We also have Associate Pastor Lady Maria Perry in the background. She's handling, hey man, she's handling all the cameras and the laptop and making sure everything goes well so that we have a nice Bible study. Amen, amen. Look, we're Resurrected Hope Ministries. Let me tell you a little bit about us in case you don't know by now. We are a ministry for you. We are a ministry that is about restoring lives, restoring lives. My God, if you need restoration, you need to come see us at Resurrected Hope Ministries. Amen. Where, when you join, when you become a part, when you're part of God's army, we will equip you, we will mentor you, and we will launch you. We just don't want you to come and just warm the seats. My God, God has something for you to do in his kingdom. And we're about that resurrected hope ministry. If you've lost hope, my God, if you've lost your way, if you don't know what to do, if you're bewildered, resurrected hope ministry is a ministry for you. We will restore your life through Jesus Christ. My God, because we pray to him, we depend on him, we lean on him, and he will do whatever he says he will do. So come on in tonight. My God, we've got a Bible study for you, my God, given to us by God, and we hope and pray above all things that it helps you, that it changes your life and the lives of your loved ones, and you'll be able to share it with people that you don't even know. You have a testimony of the good works of God. Amen, amen. So let us pray before we begin tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of your son, Jesus. We are so grateful and thankful for those that are on this Zoom, I mean, on this Facebook Live, my God, tonight. Father, bless them, Lord God, in their household and whatever they're doing, a down sitting, uprising, Lord God, whatever is going on in their life, heal, deliver, and set free. Father, we know that you're able, my God, to do all things So we look to you in the name of Jesus. And bless us in here tonight and open up our eye gate, our ear gate, open up our hearts, Lord God, to receive your word like never before. Help us to ingest it and digest it. And me, your humble servant, oh Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint me for such a time as this to speak your word to your people and all of its simplicity in the name of Jesus. Bless us and we will be blessed. Keep us and we will be kept. In Jesus' name we pray. And let everybody say amen, amen, amen. It's so important to pray, my God, because prayer is communication with God. How are you going to know anything about him if you don't talk to him? Amen? Huh? How are you going to know anything about anybody if you don't sit down and have some sort of conversation so that you can say, I know them? Amen. So tonight we're going to continue on with our lesson from last Thursday, and the title of it is Forgive. And subtitle, Unforgiveness. Amen. Forgive. We need to forgive more. Amen. God is telling us today, in today's environment, the reason why our blessings are being held up, my God, is because of unforgiveness. We have unforgiveness in the camp. And when there is unforgiveness in the camp, God cannot move. You tie his hands and, my God, his favor and his blessings, my God, cannot come to you as he has already declared and decreed for them to come. Amen. So tonight we want to continue with the topic to forgive and unforgiveness. Amen. And look, we realized one thing on last week. We realized that one must first forgive one's self. You've got to forgive yourself, amen, before you forgive anybody else or anything, amen. So you've got to take the time out and go, look, 
All right, I messed up. See, sometimes you have to talk to yourself and have a real conversation with yourself. My God, and really like lay it out, self. Look, this is what's going on. We've got to be honest with ourselves and real with ourselves, real or nothing, my God. And, and then once we get there, then we can forgive ourselves and go, you know what? My God, I, I, I'm I, like David said, I, you know, you you formed me, you know, my, my mother, you, you did all this, God. I, I just got here because of you. You know, but we've got to look at ourselves in the mirrors of our lives and goes, that is truly me. Okay. I don't care how high or how low or how in between. And you've got to forgive yourself, you know. So what God is saying to us that we have to do that first, but we don't forgive one another. So in review, I'm going to do a little review. Our unforgiveness blocks our unique healing. God gave me a a, a, a message a couple of Sundays ago uh, for about a unique healing. Lord, I need a unique healing, not just a regular laying on of hands. I need a unique healing, like a unique healing like the woman with the issue of blood. My God, that's a unique healing. Amen. My God, 15 long years and every doctor in the world ran out of money, but she believed that if she would press her way, that is the operative word. And I want to encourage you tonight that you've got to press your way to God. My God, you're going to have, it's a press to forgive somebody. It's a press, my God, uh, uh, to, 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 to have unforgiveness, my God. Amen. So it's not always easy uh, because it goes against our natural tendencies. And if it goes against our natural tendencies, you can bet that God is somewhere in there saying, yeah, this is what I, I want to take something out of you so I can put something in you. So he's trying to extract something bad out of us, for lack of a better word, to put something good on the inside. And you and I have got to let him. We've got to let him. We've got to open up, like we said to the young people on Tuesday. We've got to surrender ourselves to God. So our unforgiveness blocks our unique healing. My God, whatever it is, the my God, healing of the mind, body, and soul. My God, it blocks it because we don't forget we're harboring things uh, uh, about people in our family. Brothers and sisters don't even get along. My God, cousins and relatives don't get along. Mothers and fathers don't get along. What is going on? Because there's too much unforgiveness. I'm not going to forgive you because you hurt my feelings. Huh? So if anything, I'm going to try to hurt yours back. No. God said you just blocked your blessing. Mm -hmm. So in review, the word forgive the in the uh, uh, in the like a web in a dictionary, uh, the Webster's dictionary or the free uh, uh, dictionary uh, to forgive is to stop feeling angry or resentful towards someone for an offense or a flaw or a mistake. Stop feeling angry. Stop being so resentful and angry. Uh, and to forgive is to not harbor a grudge against somebody. I, I'm not going to hold on to this thing. I'm going to let it go. Uh, we talked about release. Oh, I, every time I say release, I feel something down on the inside. It's time for you. Yes, you. Uh-huh. And you, I see you. It's time for you to release that thing and release it to God and go back to your seat in praise and worship and watch him work. Uh, so to forgive is to not harbor a grudge against someone. And to forgive is to bury the hatchet. That's an old term. But to bury the hatchet, bury whatever that uh, contention is. We're going to put that, we, we gonna put that to rest, huh? Uh, to forgive is to let bygones be bygones. Uh, and, and when I was in the world uh, having an argument, then we make up, I say, look, man, just let it ride. Just let it ride. Let bygones be bygones. Let it go. My God is another way to forgive and release it is the ultimate way to forgive. You, you got to release that thing and my God and let it come out of you because it's killing you on the inside. 
Amen. Amen. So the biblical meaning in review of forgive uh, means to letting go uh, of resentment and giving up any claim to be compensated for the hurt or the loss that we have suffered. You got to let it go once again, release it, any resentment. And on top of that, you shouldn't be looking for something in return uh, because I've been hurt because I lost something throughout uh, what you've said or done to me. A lot of people stand in, 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 in on the side rows of life waiting to be compensated because somebody did them wrong. You're wasting your time. Amen. That's not going to happen. You need to let it go. My God. So that's the biblical meaning of forgive. Now, I, I want to propose a few questions to you in review, and I want you to think about them. I, if, if we were uh, live, if well, we are live, if we were in person, I would probably ask you to give me an answer. But since we're uh, just live on Facebook Live, have you thought about forgiveness in your life? Hmm. Have you thought about the people that you have wronged? Uh, never mind what somebody's done to you. Have you thought about the people that you have wronged, that you have hurt intentionally or even unintentionally? Have you thought about that? Have you given that any thought? Now, I want you to know I'm being transparent tonight. Uh, most nights I try to be as transparent as I can without going overboard. Well, you got to be careful with transparency also. But I, I, this is to me before it is to you, my God, because, uh, and that's mostly, if, if, if you really call by God, and I'm not trying to say anything any different, but if you really call by God, when he gives you a message, the message comes to you first. All you preachers out there know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It comes to you first. So this was to me first. Have, have you thought about the people you have wronged? Have uh, the people you have hurt unintentionally and intentionally. Have you first forgiven yourself? My God, God forgives, but have you forgiven yourself? Have you accepted that God has even forgiven you? Let's go to another turn. Do you question if you are deserving of his forgiveness? We'll do that in a heartbeat. I'm unworthy. We got to be careful about crying unworthy. A lot of times that's a look at me. That's self-seeking. Be careful of that. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. Okay. So we talked about how forgiveness actually embodies three different things, and each of which applies to different situations and uh, it provides different results. Okay. I don't have my glass tonight. Something about when the water's in these little things, they taste better. <laughs> Amen. So the three, there are three types of forgiveness, okay? And we talked about them. We won't go all through them again, but it was exoneration, forbearance, and here's that word again, release. Huh? Release. So think about that. Go back, take a look at that. Three types of forgiveness. Exonerate, I'm exon complete, it's over with. Forbearance, okay, it's, oh, I, if I got to put up with it a little bit, I will. But you know what? Sooner or later, I'm going to release that thing. Release. So when you do not forgive, we talked about this in review, when you don't forgive someone else or you don't ask for the forgiveness for the wrongs that you have committed against somebody, this can do a few things. Listen, it can rob you of your power and strip you of your dignity. Mm -hmm. huh? It can keep you trapped in anger and distress and resentment. It can make you feel helpless and stuck and frustrated. It can harm you, listen, physically or and emotionally. Because mm. huh? you're holding on to that thing. You're not, uh, I'm not going to forgive somebody else and I ain't going to ask for forgiveness. Huh? It can stop you from enjoying relationships. Mm -hmm. And also in review, on the other hand of that, uh, being able to forgive Listen to the benefits of being able to forgive. Mm -hmm. You're free. Mm -hmm. There's a healing process. There's a nurturing process. And it releases you. My yes. God. You ever, you ever had to go in and talk to your pastor about something you did in your life 
that you felt so sorry for it. it. It was sinful. It was way off the grid. And you go and you talk to your pastor about it or your leader, and they talk with you and do whatever they're going to admonish you. And then they pray for you and you walk out. Don't you walk out on like a bit of feathers. Why? Because you released from that. So being able to forgive releases you. It fills you with a lightness and it fills you with compassion and goodwill. Who wouldn't want all this? It, it's enabling, it empowers, and it enlivens you. Huh? And it also brings you closer to God. Oh, people of God and his goodness. If there's one thing that we need to bullet point tonight is bringing, getting closer to God and his goodness. Uh, I, I, I dare say we are uh, slowly, for some odd reason, uh, separating ourselves from this true and living God. And I don't understand the church of today that my God is stepping away from this true and living God, the almighty God who created all things. He spoke things into existence. He's our daddy. And you, the, the church today, it seems to be walking away from him. But that's another subject. Mm -hmm. So being able to forgive can, all, it's very refreshing, it's rewarding, and it will renew you. Mm -hmm. huh? So it's real important. I'm just trying to impress upon you how important it is to forgive yourself and somebody else mm -hmm. because unforgiveness stifles you. Unforgiveness chokes the life out of you. Mm -hmm. Amen? So then we're going to pick up tonight where we left off. For most people, the act of asking for forgiveness is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult. It's not hard to cuss somebody out. Mm -hmm. Not hard to fight and argue uh, and think all manner of evil. Right. That's, that, you notice how easy that comes? But when you come down off of that high of anger and 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 fighting and strife, huh? And stressfulness. When you come down on the first thing you go, like, my goodness, now I gotta go back and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> Cause I'm wrong. What I did, what I said, how I acted, I was wrong. And for most people, the act of asking for forgiveness is difficult. It's not easy. Okay? But in order to reign with Christ, mm -hmm. okay, from everlasting to ever, eternity, you're going to have to do it. It's such a small price to pay when you look at eternity out here. And all I got to do is just beg my brother and sister for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for what I've done, for what I've said. Okay? Not if I've done it, if I said it, for what I've done and what I've said. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. Will you? I repent of what I did to you so I could get all this. But no, we better hold on. I'm holding no. No. And I'll drag you if I got to drag you. What? Okay. So let's look at the five R's to forgiveness. The five, the letter R. The five R to forgiveness. First one is we have to accept responsibility. Okay. We've got to identify and acknowledge that you wronged that person. I was wrong. Mm. You've, got to, you've got to acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so hard for us because most time we don't show it out. <laughs> like my mother said, you don't show it out. You don't act it, like the old folks say, you don't act it the fool. <laughs> now you got to go back. And identify and acknowledge that I wronged you. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. So that's the first R, responsibility. Accept that responsibility. You're on your way to becoming to be a mature person and a mature saint. Mm -hmm. Come on, people. Amen. The second R is to express regret. Regret. We don't want to do it. To be remorseful and show your regret for wronging that person. You really must be sincere and mean it. Listen, people of God, when you say, I'm sorry, Amen. you just can't, it's, you know, just saying the words. No, you look, I know when somebody is truly apologizing Amen. 
because the I'm sorry has weight to it. And if you're not, if you don't really, if you're not uh, 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 remorseful truly and sincere about I'm sorry, it's not going to ring true to that person. Okay, and I think that's a God thing. I don't, I don't know. That's just my thinking. Because it just doesn't ring. Th- so you have to accept responsibility, number one. Number two, you have to express regret. I am sorry. My God, I'm remorseful. I, I messed up. Number three is a genuine repentance. A genuine repentance. I, repent means to turn away. I'm, I Express to the one that you've wronged that I'm not going to do this again. Okay. I, I messed up. I, I said something. I, I committed an act. I, whatever. Okay. I'll do my best not to ever do this again. Huh? Because I'm asking you for forgiveness, but I have to accept the responsibility of it. I have to express the regret. I have to have genuine repentance. And once again, if I say I will do my best to not ever do it again, if it's true, it will ring true. It's just the it's just the inflection of the word. It's like it's like uh, uh, people that are uh, in uh, 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 law enforcement. Most times they can tell when you're lying because they they know the signs with your eye going up a certain way or you looking down. There's different things that a person will do that they don't have any control over that says you're not telling the truth. So it's the same thing. So responsibility, regret. Repentance, the fourth R is reconcile. Huh? Express the desire to heal the relationship between you and that person that you've wronged. Look, I, you got to tell, I, I want to earn your respect back, your friendship back again. Where I want to get back to where we once were. Huh? I want to get back like in honor with you. I mean, you know, you respected me and I respected you. There was no... There was nothing, there was no fluff in between that. So you got to reconcile, a desire to heal the relationship between you and that person. I want this to work again. That's the fourth R. And the fifth R is that you've got to make restitution. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. In other words, you may need to do something to make things right again. There's something that... Restitution, I, I'm okay. I got to figure out what what can I do, okay. I don't want to buy the person, but if buying something will put me back, I'm going to buy it. Whatever. What can I do to make it right? Amen. That's making restitution, huh? Those are the five R's, right? And after all that is complete, okay. Then after that, it would be the time to ask for forgiveness. Amen. Not before any of this. After you've gone through all of that. After you've gone through the responsibility, the regretfulness, the repentance, the reconciling, the restitution. Then you can say, forgive me. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Not before. Because you're putting the cart in front of the horse. People won't, people just don't react that way, Amen. especially if you hurt someone's feelings. Mm-hmm. When you hurt someone's feelings, you, you, you really have to go to work to put it back together again. Amen. Amen. So what are we talking about tonight? Forgive. We have to, we have to forgive in the natural and in the spiritual and in the spiritual unforgiveness chokes out your spiritual life. And in the natural, unforgiveness makes you a person that most people don't want to be bothered with. Amen. Amen? Okay. Might get done early tonight, but that's okay. So let's talk a little bit about granting forgiveness. Now, I want to preface like I did on the last uh, Bible study, that some of this is information that I looked up, that I gleaned, and I'm using for it both naturally and spiritually. And the reason why, because it speaks to me, it's my heart. Mm -hmm. And I had to find different things so that I can express to you how important 
forgiveness is. Amen. Amen. So there are things that I'm saying that are totally not my words, okay, but they are my heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. So well, let's talk about granting forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a harder thing, now the, we were just talking about asking for forgiveness, mm -hmm. and that was a hard thing. But a harder thing to do is to grant the forgiveness. So you've come to me and said, JP, I'm sorry that I slapped you up the, on side the nose. <laughs> okay. Now it's up to me to grant the forgiveness. Mm. Now I'm stuck because I'm in a hard place. Okay. Because mm. you just slapped me in the nose. I, don't, I ain't ready. Mm. So I'll tell you what. People will say I'll never forgive them for what they did. Never. That's a bad place to be. Okay, that's that's not good. Okay, I know I, I I've I've thought that I really have. I've said people have wronged me, and I said, you know what? I, I, you'll never be forgiven, as far as I'm concerned. You'll always be that way in my book. But God has shown the spotlight down from heaven, and I double dog dare you to ask God. Show him, show show you yourself mm -hmm. because you want to live right, mm -hmm. because you want to do right. And, I, and I'm in a predicament now where I have to lead God's people. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm like, Lord, look, shine the spotlight from heaven down on me because I'm responsible whether I have two or 22 or 2,200. I'm responsible for each one of them. Amen. And you're going to hold me responsible. Yep. So I need you, first of all, to make sure I'm cleaned up. Amen. Huh? So that I can come to you and get what's needed for your people. Amen. Huh? Clean hands and a clean heart. Amen. And so God just turned the spot. I was like, oh, that's me? I double dog dare you to ask God to show you, examine yourself and see where you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do that because most of us really kind of know where we are, but to really face that, mm -hmm. my God. So granting forgiveness, there are steps to granting someone forgiveness, believe it or not. There's mm -hmm. steps, okay? And there's five steps. So here we go, number five. I've got to look up whatever the number five means. There are five steps to granting someone forgiveness. Well, I see why they don't use those, because when the top drops, it's gone. <laughs> five steps to in granting, in other words, in giving, you know, allowing the gift of forgiveness. You notice how they say the gift of forgiveness? So that must mean, if you're saying it's a gift, that it's giving. That means that it's given to you and that it's probably not something that's in you uh, innately. It's just not there all the time, and that it has to be given to you. I wonder where we get the gift of forgiveness. My God, I, I, I can only... Uh, my mind can only go so far as that the gift of forgiveness has to come from God, mm -hmm. the ultimate forgiver, mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. huh? the one that made his son sin mm -hmm. for you and I so that we could be forgiven for our sins. Amen. What? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. The gift of forgiveness. So the five steps in granting the gift of forgiveness. Number one, again, acknowledge the anger and hurt caused by the caused by clearly identifying what the offense was. Okay. In other words, say what it was. I was devastated by the fact that you cursed me out. I was devastated by the fact that you slapped me. I was devastated by the fact that you talked behind my back. I was devastated by the fact that you cheated me. I, you see what I'm saying? You clearly identify the specific 
offense. So you have to acknowledge that anger and that hurt. Okay? You've got you and this as in the natural, so in the spiritual. You've got to acknowledge I'm angry and I'm hurt because you did this. Amen. Huh? I've been in therapy uh, many times where the therapist has said, you've got to identify what's bothering you. You just can't say, I'm mad today. Well, why are you mad? <laughs> right? And clearly identify. Mm -hmm. And you usually get to the root cause of why you're angry or mad. And most times it's silly. Yeah. It's one little simple thing that you could have hurdled over five days ago. You've been walking around holding it, your blood pressure don't gone up. <laughs> All right. Number two is to take, no, there's no real word, one word, but number two is to take no revenge and any thought of inflicting harm as repayment or punishment to the offender. Now, you know, every one of us from the pulpit to the door, when somebody does us wrong, the first thing we see is red. Okay, I'm going to get you back. Okay, and sometimes we'll sit up all day long imagining how we're going to repay this person. How are we going to punish this person? Even though we'll go, well, I'm saved. I, I can't do it. But we'll still spend an entire day thinking about it. And my God, when they said it or when they did it, I should have turned and did this and did that. So we take, so in, one way to grant, one of the five steps in granting the act of forgiveness you don't take any revenge because God's got all the revenge. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Mm -hmm. You don't think about inflicting harm on that person. If the thoughts come, you got to rebuke those thoughts, people of God. Amen. Amen. The third step in granting the gift of forgiveness, you have to consider the offender's perspective. Okay, the person that offended you. Try to understand his or her attitude and their behavior. Mm -hmm. Try to figure what, what really happened. Maybe consider what part you had in the offense that was inflicted upon you. Mm -hmm. Maybe there was something that you did. Maybe there was something that you said. You know, some people, you know, I have friends and I know certain phrases and certain things will set them off even though we're close. So I don't say those things. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it would set them off. Mm -hmm. And then they're offended. Okay? So I, 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 you, you have to be very careful. You have to think about, what did I do? Did I do something to cause this? Okay, these are steps in granting the act of forgiveness. Maybe I did something. Let me examine myself. Let me look back at the situation and see how it go, how it went. And what was said. Very often somebody else says something and you got contention with somebody because a third party said something that wasn't even true. Mm -hmm. Number four, decide to accept the hurt without unloading it on the offender. In other words, don't keep passing it back and forth. Don't rehash it. Well, let me tell you, when you said, no, no, let's put this thing to bed. Because when you start rehashing it, guess what happens? It magnifies it, and you're gonna have it, you haven't gone anywhere. It just gets bigger. Mm -hmm. It gets bigger, and everybody walks away hurt. So when you want to grant forgiveness, decide to accept the hurt without unloading it on the offender. That takes something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm saying okay, that hurt me, but I'm gonna live with that. I'm gonna take that. Huh? And as a Christian, oh my God, if you, if you, you, you're putting on, that's humility. Mm -hmm. That's meekness. I, okay, I'll take that. Okay. I know you wronged me, but you know what? I love you, my brother. I love you, my sister. Okay. And I forgive you and I'm praying for you and I'm praying with you. Man, that's hard. Mm -hmm. But if you want to reign with Christ, you better figure out a way to do it and make it easy. Mm -hmm. And the last, uh, uh, step to granting the gift of forgiveness is simply this. Extend compassion and goodwill to the offender. What does that do when you say, look, you know, I, you know what? You're coming to me. You're saying you're sorry. 
I forgive you, man. It's it's all good. You know, let's just go forward the way we did. We don't have to rehash it. We know that things were said, but we're not going to hold on to that, okay? I'm going to show you compassion. I love you. Mm -hmm. I care about you, okay? I care about your life. I care about your livelihood. I care about our relationship, amen? Mm -hmm. What does that do? That releases the offended from the offense. Amen. Huh? So accept the forgiveness offered. Accept it. Mm -hmm. Don't reject it. Accept it. And see, won't God pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive? Because mm -hmm. right now, if you haven't forgiven that person or that group of people, I don't care how many years it's been, and I don't care how you feel that you've been blessed, mm -mm. you blocking your blessing in your favor. Mm -hmm. Whatever you had could have been tripled and doubled and quadrupled a hundredfold. Amen. All right. So I, I, I want to talk to you a little bit. I hope you understand the five, the, those five uh, um, steps to granting the gift of forgiveness. Amen. Just go back through it. If you've got any questions, just reach out to me at www.resdeshope.com or info.res. I'm sorry. Info at <laughs> info at res-hope.com hey man it's good to have someone who can help you so I, I want to talk a little bit about what forgiveness is not hear me I want to talk about what forgiveness is not alright listen listen carefully forgiveness is not necessarily reconciliation okay it can be a gift that the other either accepts or rejects or doesn't even know about it. Amen? Mm -hmm. It is in the heart of the forgiver. For reconciliation, two people are needed and then the relationship between them needs to be restored. Mm -hmm. So for reconciliation, forgiveness is needed. So it's not necessarily reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You have to, one, it's, it's, it can be a gift that one either accepts or rejects, or you don't even know about it. Amen? It's in the heart of the forgiver. Mm -hmm. It's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. Forgiveness, okay, is not, Pardoning. Forgiveness is not pardoning. Mm -hmm. Amen? For pardoning is a transaction. Mm -hmm. It's often a legal one that releases the injuring person from the consequences of his or her actions. Right? So in pardoning, the pardoner takes on or blots out the loss caused by the damaging situation. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not, that's not what forgiveness is about, okay? It's not about pardon. It's not a transaction, okay? It doesn't blot out the loss, Amen. okay? Amen? It doesn't release the injuring person from the consequences of their action. Mm -hmm. You're not released from that action. You have to face it. Amen. Understand? You've got to You've got to face it. Forgiveness is not condoning. We don't condone it, okay? It, it, for, it, it's, it, for, it, for it does not excuse harmful behavior. Mm -hmm. It just deals with it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Hear me. For deep hurts usually cannot be wiped out of one's memory. Right. If you're hurt from somebody, yes, you... Look, you're still going to remember that thing mm -hmm. because it's in your memory bank. Amen? Amen? All right. I hope you understand what I was saying there. If not, reach out to me. Forgiving someone isn't easy, again, but it's possible. 
It really is, people of God. It's possible to forgive. Paul said in Philippians 4 and 13, familiar passage of Scripture, I can do what? All things through Christ who strengthens me, through him who strengthens me. So it's going to take God to help you to ask your brother and sister for forgiveness. Amen. And to not only when you're on the asking, but when you're on the receiving to grant it. Amen. That's why Paul said, if I can do, if I look, if I'm walking with Christ, he, he can help me because he can do all things. And through him, if I'm with him, then I, through me, through him, I can do it. Amen. Amen? Paul said in Romans 12 and 21, he said, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Mm -hmm. So that speaks to the revengeful side. And that speaks to actually the entire ball of acts about forgiving. Okay. Don't let, don't let it fester to the point where you know, I'm not forgiving them at all. Mm -hmm. And you shout over it and you take communion over it and you preach over it. And you cast out demons over it. Mm -hmm. Huh? You're doing all of that. To only face God and hear him say, depart from me, mm -hmm. you worker of iniquity. I don't even know you. Lord. Get it right. Mm -hmm. Forgive that person. Go to that person. Ask for forgiveness. It's too late in the day. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Why are we picking flowers by the wayside? Why are we procrastinating as if Christ isn't coming back? Why? Mm. If you don't believe he's coming back, get out of the church. Mm. You're blocking my view. Mm. Huh? Make way. My God. You standing in the way. Oh, people of God. Forgiveness actually benefits you. It benefits you. I'm trying to get you to see that. Wish I could just open you all up, pour it in. It benefits you. God showed it to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I don't really want to say I'm sorry because I don't really feel like I'm sorry because I think they did, did me wrong and I'm, and I'm justifying my position and I can get five to ten people that will help me justify my position. And meanwhile, I've got all these people and everybody justifying, yeah, Perry is right. And God's like, no, 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 he's wrong. You've missed it. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is a benefit. It will benefit you. Amen. Why wouldn't we want to do it? I said it at the very beginning. You forgive, you untie God's hand. Mm -hmm. No telling what he, you know that prayer you've been praying about for years? Just maybe if you forgive that person that you've been harboring in your heart that you want to forgive, try forgiving them, releasing it, and watch the prayer that you've been praying for years come to fruition. Mm. Oh, Lord. So listen. So as you release your bitterness and anger, you're able to live with real peace and real joy. Mm. Okay? Many people choose not to forgive because they think it's too hard. And it is. It is, but they think it's too hard, so they don't do it. But I want to give you four steps tonight. I want to leave you with this. With four steps that you can take to genuinely forgive somebody. Got a lot of steps for you tonight, but I hope it's helping you. So one of the steps that you can take to genuinely forgive, you just make a quality decision. So forgiveness is about more than just saying a prayer, like, Lord, for I forgive you know, so-and-so. It's Forgiveness is a serious decision mm -hmm. that you make over and over again, mm -hmm. okay? You got to make a quality decision. It will probably be uncomfortable. It will more than likely be painful, mm -hmm. but going through the process will be worth it all in the end. Mm -hmm. Have I not tried to stress that to you? Mm -hmm. So four steps that you can take to genuinely forgive. The first one is make a quality decision. The second one is to depend on God. Uh-oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Depend on God. Some of y'all probably almost saying, who is God? Mm. 
and you got a big old title in front of your name. Depend on God. Fortunately, God gives us the strength to forgive. Uh, we can live with a prayerful mindset, uh, uh, an attitude. Lord, help me not to be offended today. He can give us that strength. We can depend on him. We can lean on him. Keep me, Lord, from unnecessary anger. We can ask him that if I'm mad at somebody and angry at somebody, show me who it is. Because sometimes we'll forget. Because we're carrying it so long, we'll forget. Show me, turn that spot, Salah. Turn the spotlight from heaven on me. And then give me the grace to forgive them. Or give me the grace to go to them and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Ephesians 4, 32, Paul says, Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. What is wrong with you that you can't forgive your brother or sister? God forgave you in all your sins. You were down and dirty. There were things that you've done that if you were to tell any of us, my God, it might, so folks might run you out the church. Huh? But look at this great God. In spite of your mess, huh? in spite of where you were, stuck in your sins, Huh? God forgave you. And you can't forgive me. You can't forgive my bro your brother. You can't forgive your sister. Wake up, church. Wake up. Huh? We have to depend on God. Huh? If you're easily offended, or if there's a person in your life who just simply annoys you to no end, not only do you have to decide to forgive them and live in peace. But you're going to have to depend on God for the grace to make it through with this person. I can't stand him. But God, you got to help me to stand him. Because I know if I'm going to reign with you, that I got to be able to stand them. And I got to be honest about it. Huh? So renew, chain, renew in me the right spirit. Huh? That's what David said. Renew in me the right spirit. I need a change of heart, mind, body, and soul. Step in my life. Give me the grace. Without you, I can't do it. Number three, understand your own emotions. Huh? Emotions provoke psychological changes that give us a desire to do something. Our emotions, emotionally. Some of us are so emotionally quick, we just, boom. Whatever it is, we'll just go without thinking. Just run just like like a, a bird flying into, he'll think it's a window and it's glad. He just don't, because it looks like a window. Bam, that's how we do it. Bust our head up against a window because and it's glass. So for example, when somebody hurts you and you feel pain, the first thing you want to do is tell them off. Mm. Understand your emotions. You may want to get back at them or just get away from them. Mm. I hear you. I understand. But you don't have to make that choice. Yeah. Remember, your will gives you a, the ability to live beyond your feelings. Mm -hmm. Hear me. Your will to serve God gives you the ability to live beyond that revenge that you're feeling in your heart. Mm -hmm. To live beyond that I want to cuss them, I want to fight, I want to pull her hair out by the roots. Mm -hmm. huh? But your will to live for God my God, and be obedient to his word, it gives you the ability, I got strength to live beyond my feelings. Huh? And given time, what will happen, your emotions will catch up with your decision to forgive. In other words, as soon as something happens, you won't fall over and go dive off in the deep part. You'll sit back and think about it. Huh? The slap. Bam. Hmm, you just shake yourself. Go, all right. Amen. Huh? <laughs> Number four, pray for your enemies. Huh? I'm giving you takeaways. Pray for your enemies. Matthew 5, 44. Jesus commands us, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Those who despitefully use you. Is, can it get any plainer than that? 
Huh? This may be one of the hardest teachings to follow, but we can be assured if we follow it, it's to our benefit. Amen. But think about that. You, I have to love the person that my enemy, my enemy wants to take me out. And then I got to turn around and pray for the ones who, despite who I know, are talking about me and sticking daggers in my back. Jesus said, yeah, you got to love them and pray for them. Huh? Did I have five or did I have four? Four. That was the fourth one. That was the takeaway. People of God, listen to me. Listen. The choice is yours. It truly is. It's up to you. God said, choose ye this day. Yeah. So today you have the choice to um, overcome evil with good. You've got that choice. It's available to you. Take heed, use it. You can arrive at a new level of joy as you take meaningful actions to forgive. Mm -hmm. Huh? And tonight, all I want to do is encourage you. Encourage you to do yourself a favor and make the right choice. Mm -hmm. Make the right choice tonight. What is the right choice, Pastor? Forgive. Don't judge. Huh? Let God do the judge. Just forgive. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do is forgive. Don't be so quick to get the moat, that tiny piece of substance, out of your brother's or sister's eye when you have a big old beam, a big plank in your own eye. Mm -hmm. Don't be so quick to do it. Forgive tonight. Forgive. I hope something was said in these last two weeks that will help you. The word of God is light. The word of God is life. Mm -hmm. And he is telling each and every one of us to forgive one another mm -hmm. as he has forgiven us. Amen. Okay. And if we do it, and I've given you ways to do it. If we do it both naturally and spiritually, God will bless you. Mm -hmm. Amen. God will move you to the next level. We always we like that. We want to go to levels. God will move you to the next level. Amen. But he's speaking to you tonight. Amen. So don't close your heart. Open up your heart. Amen. And say, Lord, I'm going to do it. I, 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 don't, I feel like I don't have the strength to do it. And I feel it's going to make me less of a man or less of a woman. I feel that I'm walking around with my tail between my legs. I feel that I, I feel belittled. Well, that's where God wants you to be, right there, mm -hmm. with your tail between your legs, belittled, okay, feeling like the whole world's about to fall in on you. But when you do what he says do, he said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. Mm -hmm. You got to trust this God. My God, you got to trust him. Mm -hmm. You got to give him a chance. We sing the song, we used to sing the song, Tear the Church of Have You Tried Jesus? Mm -hmm. Have you tried him tonight? Have you truly tried? Have you truly put him to the test? You said forgive, so I'm going to go ahead and do it and see what will happen. Amen. And if you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, you need to wake, make your way down to 192 Graves Road in Fayetteville, Georgia, every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Resurrected Hope Ministries is there. We're there. If ain't nobody there but me and First Lady, my God, Maria Perry, we are there for you that don't know Christ as your personal Savior. If you can't get there, find a place, find a church. Lord, show me a church that will help me. Show me a church that will give me what I need, my God, in order to reach you. Point me in that direction so that I can get what I need, my God, to serve you. My God, and to reign with you forever. Amen. My God, if you haven't repented of your sins and gone down, been baptized in Jesus' name, my God, you need it. It's essential. And that's what we do at Resurrected Hope Ministries. My God, you need to turn from your wicked ways. And you need to call on Jesus. Mm -hmm. My God, in repentance, Lord, I'm sorry. My God, for all that I've done and all that I've said, you have died for me and me alone. Mm. So I'm coming home. I'm coming home. My God, he will accept you. My God, he will wash you in the blood. 
and his blood and he will set your feet on a rock to stay. He will give you his spirit. Speaking in other tongues of the spirit of God give utterance. He'll give you his spirit to navigate in this season. Amen. Amen. Won't you come? Won't you come? Please come. Go out on our website, www.res-hope.com. You can send us an email. You can call us. My God, you can stop down, like I said, every Sunday. My God, at 2.30 at 192 Graves Road in Fayetteville, Georgia. We're there and God is there. Amen. God bless you. God keep you in the name of Jesus. What time is it? Offering, Offering time here at the temple. My God, oh, bring your tithes, bring your offering, sow a seed to Resurrected Hope Ministries, and watch God bless you exponentially. My God, whatever your needs are, he will supply it. If you take care of his church, he will take care of you. Amen. Amen. We've got various ways in which you can take care of God's church. Mm -hmm. Cash app, Zell, Giblify. My God, what else we got? PayPal, my God, check, cash, whatever. Bring it on in, sow a seed. It takes money Amen. to keep all this going. It takes money. We don't need money to buy a house or car. We got that. Mm -hmm. Clothes, we have it, praise God. We thank God for it. Mm -hmm. huh? But we need money to further the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So please give, please sow a seed. We appreciate it. God appreciates it. And he, like I said, he will bless you in Jesus' name. And remember, giving is just as important as hearing the word of God and living. That's a part of your living. Mm -hmm. Your giving is a part of your living holy. We always minimize giving because we think, well, the pastor want a Cadillac. No, that's not what it's about. Okay, it's furthering the kingdom of God Amen. for those that are in need. Amen. 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 So please sow a seed. And we appreciate all of you that have been doing it. And I'm sure that God has been blessing you. Amen. 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 All right. Any announcements? We have on every Tuesday night at seven o'clock on Zoom. You can find this on our uh, Facebook, on our uh, website. Every Tuesday at 7 o'clock, we have Youth Bible Study, okay? And uh, it's, been, it's been really epic. It really has. And the young people are just growing. They're coming. And we had about eight or nine on, on Tuesday. I, I'm just, we're, myself and Pastor, we are just elated. We just can't believe what God is doing uh, right in front of our face with the young people. They have a hunger and a thirst. So every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom, you'll find that on the front page of www.res.com. You'll see uh, how you can sign into Zoom. Come out. Come out families. Come youth. Come moms, dads, cousins, uncles, adults. Just come on out. God is truly blessing. Amen. He's blessing. And of course, every Thursday night at 7.30, we have deep dive Bible study. And every Sunday, we have our in-person uh, uh, service at 192 Graves Road, my God, in Fayetteville, Georgia. My God, meet, come there. God meets us there. Amen. My God, he just, it's just amazing, this God that we serve. All right, all minds clear? All right, we thank you once again for coming out tonight. We know, realize you have many places that you could have gone. But we are so grateful and thankful that you've came to sit with us and hear what thus saith the Lord. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. Good night. Mm -hmm.